Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name's Damon and in today's episode of Sump Banter, we're here to talk about Necromunda tainted and corrupted gangs. Um, so um, this isn't going to be a very long video. I haven't done any Sump Banter videos for a little while, um, but I just thought I've got a list of stuff to get through. And this is one that um, a few people have asked about. Um, just some clarity on the rules and stuff. Um, and yeah, um, let's get into it basically. So what is a corrupted gang in Necromunda? What is a tainted gang in Necromunda? Those are two words that we're gonna be using here. Now a corrupted um, gang would mean that um, chaos, the forces of chaos have um, taken hold and um, you've taken root in your gang's sort of structure. And a tainted gang is, is Xenos tainted. So what I mean by Xenos tainted is they're, they're tainted by an alien um, infection basically. And that of course, is Gene Stealer Cult. So um, <clears throat> these are the two different ways that your house gangs, uh, I'll, I'll say it again, house gangs can be um, twisted by evil. Um, now, rules as written, it is strictly the six house gangs that can be tainted or corrupted. Um, of course, Necromunda, there are a lot of rules that are written in certain ways, and really it's down to your arbitrators. So. If you're in a campaign and you're running enforcers and you want them to be gene stealer cult tainted enforcers, then sure, just ask your arbitrator. I've actually had a gang of gene stealer cult enforcers. It wasn't particularly broken. But yeah, if you're abusing the rules in any way, then that's when it becomes questionable. Always ask your arbitrator. If you are the arbitrator, just make sure you're not doing anything too cheesy. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into it exactly now, um, and just I'll just highlight exactly what I mean by tainted and corrupted gangs, I suppose. So there are <clears throat> obviously the ruinous powers of chaos. There are four chaos gods, Slanesh, Zinch, Nurgle, and uh, Korn. And they all have their own different flavor. As you know, if you've been a fan of um, Warhammer 40k or Warhammer in general, uh, throughout the years, the chaos powers have been going for a long time. I'm even old enough to remember Malal. Um, some of you won't, um, but we, we don't talk about Malal anymore, so there you go. Um, but yeah, you've also got um, the, the Gene Stealer. Uh, we all know what Gene Stealers are. They, they sort of first were famous from Space Hulk, I believe, the board game, but yeah, of course they're attached to the, um, the Tyranids in 40K as well. Um, so yeah, so if you were to become a, if you were to choose to become a corrupted or tainted gang, it adds a lot of flavor to the game, I think. Um, there are more pros than there are cons, and I'm gonna go through what those are exactly in a minute. And they're quite different depending on whether you are indeed Gene Stealer Cult infected, tainted, or, um, or Chaos Corrupted, indeed. Um, now, of course, you, you wouldn't be able to corrupt a Chaos Helic gang because they are already corrupt. I would say um, rules as intended, you wouldn't be able to corrupt a corpse grinder party either because um, you know they clearly, clearly worship the blood god Corn, but they just do it in a sort of covert way and don't call him Corn. Um, but yeah, I think it would be, f I mean, we, we know corpse grinders are broken anyway, so I think anything that gives them any help um, is not good. Um, that's my two cents on it. You, you sure, if you want to do Slaneshi um, corpse grinder cults and your arbitrator is fine with it, then great, but I think, I think that's the wrong move if you ask me. Um, and in terms of um, the other gangs that can't be corrupt, I mean, I'd say obviously Gene Stealer Cult gangs can't be Chaos Corrupted because they are <laughs> Gene Stealer Cult infected. It wouldn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, like I said, rules as intended. It is only the six house gangs. However, if you wanted to have a squat mining guild that's Zinchian or something, then just ask your arbitrator. Some arbitrators are cool with these things, some aren't. I would be totally cool with it as long as you weren't trying to game it or break the system in some way. So um, it really goes it really goes that far. So the first thing that you'd need to take uh, or be aware of, I suppose, in becoming a corrupted or tainted gang in Necromunda is that you would automatically become an outlaw. So if you do have a, <clears throat> a type of campaign which is set up um, with outlaws and lawful, law-abiding um, gangs, you are by default, an absolute outlaw, of course, because you worship in chaos or a Xenos um, scum. So um, just remember that. The other thing is, um, uh, rules as written here as well, is you cannot change alignment. So if you are um, you know, a corrupted gang um, and you're worshiping a particular chaos god as a house gang, you can't then change god. You're always going to be worshiping corn. If you start off wor worshiping corn, you can't just switch and change your mind. Um, 
<clears throat> and obviously with um, Gene Steeler cult um, corrupted or tainted gangs you can't just change your mind and not become corrupted once that um, once that rot sets in you're definitely um, you're definitely on your way to hell um, or your way on, on your way to the um, punishment by the Inquisition anyway um, so there you go um, now you do keep access to your house lists so so if you're an Escher gang that's converted to Nurgle um, or like the Nur girls from the um, Sump City guys um, then you know you still keep access to your house list. You still get your toxins. You still get all of that shit. You still get your death maidens. You still get all the positions. Um, likewise with um, Gene Stealer Cult Tainted as well. You still keep your house list. So if you're a Delac gang, you still keep your Delac house list. You do not get access to the Gene Stealer Cult house list. Likewise with Chaos, you do not get access to the Chaos Hellet house list. To be honest, you wouldn't want either because they're quite restricted to compared to actual house gang lists. Um, so there you go. Um, and likewise, with your skill lists, you keep the same skill lists as well, so you don't get access to new skills or anything like that. However, <clears throat> we're going to go into it in a minute, you can become a Psyker if you're Gene Stealer Corrupted as well. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, there is a little note here that does say, um, Cordor lose access to the Articles of Faith. Now, from a fluff perspective, that makes absolute sense because you're no longer worshipping the Emperor. You shouldn't be praying to the Emperor and using Articles of Faith. Um, it just wouldn't make sense if you're actually worshipping Zinch. I mean, you could argue that, um, you know, those Articles of Faith are being granted by a Chaos Power. Uh, in the guise of the Emperor, so I mean there are, there are arguments there, but I would say I'd agree with the, the fact that Cordor probably wouldn't get the Articles of Faith access if they were corrupted or tainted, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> so, there are two times you can become tainted or corrupted. One is during gang creation, of course, which is probably the best time to do it because there's no effort in, in doing it, or the other one is during a campaign as well. So, um, now Becoming a um, corrupted or chaos corrupted gang during a campaign. I'm just actually going to read the rules out here. Um, if you're doing it during a campaign and not a creation, your leader must successfully make the dark ritual post battle action and become outlawed, of course, even if you fail that action. Um, now, this is the same dark ritual action that we talk about with our chaos helots. So, if you want to check that out, you can go and see my guide to chaos helot gangs as well for more details on the dark ritual itself. So, even if you fail that, you still become outlawed, you just don't get the boon from chaos, but if you pass, um, you, um, you know, you, uh, you turn into a corrupted gang there as well. It does say here, a gang member is turned into a spawn after the leader has performed the dark ritual, regardless if the dark ritual was successful or not. So, chaos spawn are actually quite hard to come by, well not hard to come by, but you need to lose a lot of games, really, you need to have a lot of negative multipliers to be able to get a Chaos Spawn in the actual regular Chaos Helot list. However, here it's saying that if you do that Dark Ritual and even if you fail, you still get a Chaos Spawn. So for me, that's a fantastic deal. Um, so you will get a Chaos Spawn. Chaos Spawns are Chaos Brutes, basically. You roll randomly for their skills. Again, if you want to find out more about them, you can check out my um, Chaos Helot video as well. Um, so that's pretty cool by itself. We're just talking about the Chaos Corrupted um, pathway here not the gene stealer one so um, there you go but the benefits that you get as a chaos corrupted gang once you've performed that um, dark ritual and you have become a fully chaos uh, or chaotic um, gang um, and you've picked your one of the four um, chosen gods whether it be Nurgle, Korn, Slanesh or Zinch um, <clears throat> first of all your lasting injuries now become mutations so there's a separate um, there's a separate table for mutations, um, which is pretty cool. I might actually go through those in a minute uh, and just compare them to the um, lasting injury versions of events. Um, it's pretty cool, like really fun and really fluffy. Some of them are actually really good as well. So like you're not just nerfed, you get a little bit of a, a little bump as well, which is quite cool. Um, you can perform your dark rituals post post battle like any other Chaos Helot gang. So you will still need to perform those dark rituals and pass that test to remain in favor of that god. So you're still an outlaw and you're still kind of chaos corrupted, but you don't have the, the, the bonuses from that chaos god unless you keep passing those rituals. So remember that. Now, passing the ritual, obviously the more games you win, the more rep you get, stuff like that, and the more um, you know captives you have, it's easier to, to um, get those rituals. Of course, if you're praying to the same god, which you have to be, 
um, as a corrupted house gang. Um, you also get bonuses for that too. However, if you're losing reps, you're losing game and stuff, um, you, you're losing games, you do have negatives to that role as well. Um, but <clears throat> there you go. You have to be doing that. Um, so the other thing is, and I'm not really a fan of this, is that you get immunity to insanity across the board. Now, again, rules as written here, it does say that your entire gang gets immunity to insanity, which didn't used to be that powerful because insanity wasn't really a thing. But now with all the psychic powers, tactics cards, psychoterica that involves insanity, I would say that's too powerful. If you look at the Chaos Helot gang, um, the only characters or positions or fighters that are in a Chaos Helot gang that are immune to insanity are your champions, your witch and your leader, not your gangers. So I would go with that and actually transfer that and just say that your champions, your leader, uh, are the ones that are immune to insanity, not your gangers and juves, etc. I think that would be silly. Um, it's too powerful, honestly. Um, so there you go, that's my two cents on it, but it does say, rules is written, that you're immune to insanity flatly across the board, so there you go. You cannot, again, I'm just reiterating, you cannot seek the favor of another god. Um, you can if you're a Chaos Helot gang, but if you're a corrupted um, house gang, you may not seek the favor of another god. So if you've prayed to Zinch in the first instance and you've got the boon of Zinch, then you are always Zinch until you die. So that's that. Um, even though it's the god of change, you certainly can't change. So Zinch doesn't want you to change to another god. Um, so there you go. That is uh, you, the, the sort of basic um, thing on corrupted chaos gangs. You get a free spawn. That's fucking awesome. Um, yeah, what's not to like about that? So. There really aren't any negatives. The only negative is that you become an outlaw, but that's not really a problem. I mean, it just means that you get better access to the black market trading post um, and slightly different conditions for um, you know cap capture and things like that. But really, there aren't any downsides to this. It only makes your gang better. So if you want to be a um, you know a Nurgle Goliath gang, then Goliaths are already very very good. Then all of a sudden you're making that gang even better. So there you go. Uh, we're going to talk about, about um, Xenos uh, Tainted Gangs now. So Xenos or Gene Stealer Cult Tainted Gangs now. Um, slightly different to your Corrupted Gangs now. If you were to be, I don't know, an Escher Gang who wants to be corrupted by the Gene Stealer Seed, then um, again, there are two ways of doing it. You can do this at creation or you can do this um, you know, during a, um, a campaign. Um, and yeah, becoming infected, um, again I'm just going to read from the rules quickly here. An existing gang can have the leader spend a post-battle action to seek out a cult. So you're actively seeking out a cult here um, to join by passing an intelligence check. So, you know, some gangs have higher intelligence than others. Obviously, Vansar the Lack have higher intelligence stats um, than some of the other gangs, so they're more likely to do it. However, you know, you're better off just starting off the campaign as, the, as corrupted. So anyway, <clears throat> even if you fail, the leader still becomes, your gang still becomes an outlaw, just like being a chaos corrupted gang, you still become an outlaw. You're just an outlaw because you're actively looking to join a cult, um, obviously. Um, and as it does say here, if there is a gene stealer cult gang in the campaign and that gang agrees, the prospective cult can become infected without passing the intelligence check. So that's a cool little bit of fluff there as well. So there you go. Now the infected bene benefits, the, the gene stealer tainted benefits here are slightly different to your chaos corrupted benefits, but we are going to go back and talk about the corrupted benefits in terms of the four gods and the boons that they give you as a gang in the game, which are pretty good. Now the infected benefits is that your leader can become a psyker. So um, it, it really depends what your leader is, but of course being a psyker means that you're using your willpower stat to uh, activate psychic powers. Um, of course, a Goliath leader does not have the best willpower. However, it is pretty funny having a Goliath leader with mind control. So do it, it's fun. Um, <laughs> he's just not gonna very often, um, you know, activate those psychic powers there anyway. So. They can be upgraded to a Psyker. Um, they also get access to Psychic Familiars as well. Now, Gene Stealer Cult Psychic Familiars are very, 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 very good. Um, they are broken un unless they've been house ruled. The house rule is kind of that um, their special activation only works once per turn. Um, it rules as written though, you can use them every time you get hit by them and you're basically um, dodging hits um, using these little pets. They can be really annoying, really, really good, but 
in a gene stealer gang, they kind of serve a purpose because they, your champions are quite weak, so they, they do help your champions survive a little bit more. But anyway, we're getting off topic here. Um, but you do get access to being a psyker. Your leader can be a psyker, and they can also have psychic familiars as pets there as well. Um, you can hire one aberrant in your gang as well. Aberrants are like, they're kind of brutes. They're like neo-brutes. They're not necessarily brutes, but they're just big, tough dudes. Um, just monstrosities, basically, big and strong. Uh, they're very good actually, um, they come with a, a skill and they're quite tough and strong and they, they're actually quite fast as well and they're good in close combat, however they've got no shooting ability whatsoever, they can't even carry grenades which is really annoying actually, I wish they did. Um, but they're really really good, um, great screening, great just, they just punish you, power picks etc as well. Pretty cool, but you can only have one of them in an infected gang. Um, and they count as a ganger as well, so they don't count as a champion or a specialist or anything else. They count towards your ganger allocation, which is pretty cool. Um, and th that's what they are now uh, in, in Gene Steeler Cult Gangs as well. They are, they are as gangers. They count as gangers. Um, you can purchase a cult icon as well, a Gene Steeler Cult icon, which I believe off the top of my head does give you one extra activation, a group activation um, amount. So your leader could activate with, instead of activating with two others, you could activate with three others. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong on that one because there are a few different cult icons. Um, and the other thing is you can hire hybrid juves as well. And a hybrid juves, I believe, get, um, uh, you know, a third arm, which is pretty cool. Um, if, you're adding, if you're adding them, you can pay for that third arm for 30 credits. However, if you get them free from your settlement, they come with a third arm, which is pretty cool. Or at least that's what it says here anyway. Um, now, upgrading your leader to a psyker does cost credits, so you'd need to upgrade the value of your leader. Now, if you're using Yak Tribe, which I hope you are, there is a little function, there's a little tab that says adjust cost, so you can actually price adjust the cost of your leader. I've done this for my Inquisitor um, to make him a psyker. He's a Venator leader, um, but I've, I've upgraded him by 35 credits um, and to add a psychic power, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can do that here as well. And it's the same process, but for some reason it's 40 credits instead of 35 to make them, you know, a, a psychic leader. Um, and it's a post-battle action to actually do that as well. You can't be in recovery. So um, you can't just start being a psychic leader, apparently, according to the rules here. <clears throat> you do need to um, make it a post-battle action um, and, and spend the 40 credits um, on doing that. Um, so you become an unsanctioned psyker, of course. You are not a sanctioned psyker because you are a cult fanatic nutcase and you get access to a, a cult weird power. And it does say in the rules here, cult weird powers. Now the cult weird powers are quite specific. I think there are only six. However, again, talk to your arbitrator now that the Book of the Outcast is out. Talk to your arbitrator. I would say telepathy or telekinesis are the two tables that really fit. Um, gene stealer cults in general, I'd say, particularly telepathy, which is arguably the best skill tree anyway. Um, but always ask your arbitrator before you make a decision on taking something like that. Um, and you, you know, you have you have access to weird powers as a primary skill. So you'll have your leadership, whatever your special speciality is for that house gang, and then you'll also have weird powers as your access uh, as a primary as well. Um, so that, <clears throat> in a nutshell is Chaos Corrupted Gangs and, um, what's the word, um, Gene Stealer Tainted Gangs as well. I'm just going to go quickly to look at the, um, the favours of the Chaos Gods here because it's just worth touching on quickly if you're having ideas already. If, this, if, you, have, if you don't know about this stuff and you're suddenly going, oh shit, this is awesome, um, modelling opportunities wise and um, fluff wise, you can have a fucking Orlock corn gang you can have you know some really cool conversion ideas here and some really cool game ideas as well um, from a narrative perspective but also you know you can make your gang better really just by um, just by doing this with either xenos or chaos corrupted gangs here too so <clears throat> in terms of the um, you know in terms of the god's favor that you that you get um, if you are um, corn once per round you can re-roll a failed wound roll, which is really, really good if you want to deal more damage to a little bit, you know, it's very thematic, it goes with corn very nicely as the blood god. Um, your chaos spawn gets plus one strength, which is fantastic. Um, and your leader gets plus one attack. So if you're a close combat focus gang, corn is the thing, um, but not necessarily. I mean, you're still getting that re-roll to wound as well, but you know, obviously that plus one strength on the spawn is nice, plus the plus one attack on, you know, if you do that with an Escher leader, you've got four attacks base. So let's think about that for a minute. Four attacks base with a shock whip or something, very nice. Nurgle, arguably 
<clears throat> I don't know. I think it's one of the best ones personally, but they all they all have their merits. Nurgle, um, of course, is the opposite of corn, so you get to re-roll once per turn a recovery roll, um, which is really cool for keeping your leader alive and stuff. Your tar your spawn gets plus one toughness, which is great too, uh, and your leader gets plus one wound. So if you're an Orlock Nurgle um, gang, then of course your leader has four wounds out of the box, which is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah, there you go. So we did the, the example with Corn with Escher there, four attacks. Nurgle with Orlok, four wounds. Nasty. The next one is Slanesh, my favorite Chaos God personally, and I think a lot of people's as well. Um, now, this one's really cool. So once per round, you get to activate two fighters instead of one. Now, it's worth noting that those two fighters can be anywhere on the board, so that's there's some real... There's some real possibility for some cheese and some shenanigans there. It's pretty good, um, you know, really, really good if you think about it. Um, loads of, you know, loads of um, examples that I can think of, but I'm not going to name them all right now. Um, your cow spawn, instead of, because they move randomly, they get D6 movement. That's it. All your cow spawn get D6 movement. Your Slaneshi cow spawn gets 2D6 movement and you pick the best, um, which is cool. So it means you're always moving higher than the regular spawn. Uh, and your leader gets plus two movement. So, yeah. So, you're, you're, um, I think all leaders have movement five. There isn't a, the, the only movement six leader in the game is the Ash Waste Nomads Chieftain, uh, who's movement six, but, you know, rules is written, he can't be corrupted anyway. But, you know, just thinking about a Avansar leader suddenly as movement six, which is cool. Um, you know, an, a Goliath leader goes from movement four to movement six. Very tasty indeed. I can't really imagine, oh, I don't know. Slaneshi Goliath is quite cool, like flesh cult, um, I suppose. Kind of almost like the Conan the Barbarian cult, actually, thinking about it. That would be a really cool theme with those two guys with the big axes and shit and the snake guy. Anyway, off topic again. Um, <laughs> I'm just having some ideas already. Um, and the last one is, is the God of Change, Zinch. Um, Zinch is my least favorite Chaos God, to be honest. Uh, I've, always, I've always found that, but the boons that you get for Zinch is pretty cool. Um, you ignore, once per turn again, you ignore all negative hit modifiers for a shoot basic action. So pretty cool, you can shoot someone in hardcover um, as normal, um, which is really good. I don't think it's the best one out of the bunch, but it's still really good if you are a shooty gang, maybe Vansar, something like that or you've just got some powerful heavy weaponry and you want to just shoot someone in the open instead of being in hardcover, pretty cool. And once per turn, it's good. Um, your Chaos Spawn gets a four plus save, so your Chaos Spawn doesn't actually normally have a save, but they're really hard to kill anyway, but your Chaos Spawn suddenly has like carapace armor, quite scary. Um, and this is the best bit, your leader gains a random weird power. Um, now it does say here in brackets, possessed hive or ghast table, uh, the ghast table is from a scenario or from using ghast as well. But again, since the Book of the Outcast has come out, I would say um, pick a table and then do randomly from that. Um, pretty fun though. I think that's really awesome. Um, if I was an arbitrator, I would say, because it's Zinch and it's the God of Change, I would say if, you're, if you've got a Zinch gang, pick a random one each game. That would be cool. Um, don't have the same one for the entire thing. I think... A random one for each game would be really, really fun, really fluffy, really thematic, and just awesome. So there you go. <clears throat> now, the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly was um, mutations. So we're going to come back and talk about mutations, uh, or chaos mutations anyway, um, instead of, you know, serious critical injuries there as well. So be right back. Okay, so this is really fucking fun. Um, so this is your, um, to replace your um, lasting injuries table, we've got a Chaos Mutations table, which really takes me all the way back to um, the old realm of Chaos books for 40k and stuff. Of course, we're going back to the early 90s now, I think, but um, you had like a D100 and you could roll mutations and stuff for your um, for your champions and whatnot in, uh, in, in, in those games. But again, we're getting off topic here, so apologies, but I always, whenever I'm doing these videos, I always start reminiscing about the good old days, so apologies for that. But I'm sure those of you out there who are my age group, uh, and have been doing, uh, you know, Warhammer stuff for a long time. We'll probably appreciate that I bring bring up all this old hammer shit all the time. Um, but anyway, getting into it, um, we have uh, instead of the lasting injuries table, uh, you know, when you when you get a lasting injury as a corrupted gang or chaos corrupted gang, you get mutations instead, basically, which is really really cool. Um, so of course, if you roll a double one, your um, lesson learned, so that gives you one XP just as it does with a normal um, ganger or whatever. 
um, which is really cool. You get one XP for getting snake eyes. If you roll a 12 to a 26 on the 2d6, then of course you're out cold, so it means that you, you're, you're playing the next battle again as normal um, without any sort of injury. Um, if you get a 31 to 45, again, same thing, grievous in injury there, so you go into recovery, nothing else happens, but it just does mean that you miss the next game. And um, 46 is humiliated, which again is the same. Now, if you're humiliated as a chaos um, corrupted gang, you are instead getting something called hungering pride. So this is pretty cool. I'm gonna read this out to you now. So you must activate before other fighters in the crew. So this fighter always activates first. So that can really stuff up your plans. To be honest, it's so bad that it makes you wanna just kill that fighter. But if it's a very powerful champion or leader, then you're gonna to have to think about that one. Um, if other friendly fighters also have this mutation, choose the order. So you can choose the order if you have multiple, which kind of takes the edge off it a tiny bit, but you gain one XP for taking an enemy leader or champion out of action. So that's cool, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's a funny one, um, but that's what humiliated is for, um, for Chaos Corrupted people. They get hungering pride. Now, if you roll a 51, which is normally a head injury, you get dark madness. Um, so pass an intelligence test each, each activation or roll a d6 to determine the first action. So that you, basically your actions are random if you don't pass an intelligence check. So on a one or two, you get to move. <laughs> on a three or four, you get to shoot or fight. And on a five or six, no action. So a one in three chance twice um, to do nothing at all and just stand around there going, Duh. so that's a head injury. Um, an eye injury, so that would be normally ballistic skill nerf, I believe. Uh, instead, this is 52 by the way, you get bestial, bestial senses. Um, you can't start or take part in group activations at all, but you count as having a bio scanner, which is kind of cool. So you got a piece of war gear there for free, but you can't ever be part of a group activation. That's not too bad, but it's not great either because um, sometimes you're gonna need those group activations. The next one is hand injury, which I think is weapon skill normally, so minus one weapon skill for your normal type of ganger. Here though, you get a disturbing appendage. <laughs> I can think of a few disturbing appendages. Um, but this one counts as a knife that can't be disarmed or destroyed. So you get a free fighting knife, basically. Uh, and you add minus one to hit modifier when using unwieldy weapons um, with weapon skill or ballistic skill. So not bad if you don't have unwieldy weapons. Um, you just get a free knife instead of minus one ballistic skill um, or weapon skill or whatever. Not bad at all. Uh, the next one is um, hobbled. <clears throat> now hobbled I think is minus one movement normally. This is 54. Um, and you get warped limbs. So you're still minus one movement as you are with hobbled normally. However, roll 3d3 and choose the highest when charging instead of a single d3. So it's actually quite a big um, boon that one. It's quite good. Um, it almost guarantees that you're getting that high charge range. But you're still minus one movement. So it's not too bad but it takes the edge off the minus one movement that's for sure. Uh, the next one, 55, is spinal injury. So normally a spinal injury, I think, is strength. Am I right? It could be strength or toughness. Strength, yeah. Now, this gives you crooked body. Uh, add a minus one hit modifier to ranged attacks at long range. You can't wear armor of any kind. Um, so that's annoying. So if you, if you have armor and you get this, you'll have to get rid of the armor, um, which is be incredibly annoying if you had, um, you know, Heavy carapace armor, you'd have to you'd give that away or sell it or something, I don't know. Um, I haven't really thought about it to be honest, but you'd still, I think, rules as intended, I think you'd still be able to get um, field armor. So um, yeah, why not? Because that's not wearing it, is it? Uh, the next one, enfeebled, I think is normally minus one toughness. This is 56. Now this is twisted flesh. Remove one flesh wound at the start of each activation. Can't benefit from a bio booster, Medicaid kit, or assistance from friendly fighters when making recovery tests. Um, remove one flesh wound. That's pretty cool. So you, you, yeah, you get one flesh wound back. It's really amazing, actually. Um, and but you can't benefit from a bio booster, a Medicaid kit, or assistance from friendly fighters when making recovery tests. That's fucking awesome. I mean, normally minus one toughness is terrible, but that's nowhere near as bad. Um, 61, 65 is a critical injury, just the same. So you'd still need to take them to the dock, etc. Um, you know, or the rogue dock if you've got a hanger on. And 66 is, of course, that lovely memorable death, which always seems to come up when you really least want it. And it's usually on your leader in game one of a campaign. Uh, for, 
from my experience. Doesn't happen to me that often, touch wood, but I've seen it happen to a lot of people in our campaigns when they, their leader dies in game one or game two and it's just horrendous, so um, yeah, but there you go. That's 66. Um, that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about with Corrupted and Gene Stealer um, Tainted Gangs there. I hope this was helpful. I hope that's shed some light on a few things. If there's anything I've missed, then I'll, I'll go over it in the next video or whatever. But um, there's a few ideas for you. I think the most exciting thing for me when it comes to Corrupted and Tainted Gangs is just giving you more, more options, more versatility, particularly in the modeling, the hobby side of things. I love the idea of creating, I don't know, um, you know, a Zinchian Delac gang, for example, or all sorts of things that you can do and you can combine, you know, kit bash bits of Age of Sigmar and demons and stuff. You could use, um, you know, familiars instead of pets and I don't know, all sorts of shit. Um, very, very cool. Some really good stuff there. I think the Chaos Corrupted um, shit is more, more, you know, there's more flavor there and um, particularly getting a free cow spawn is really lovely there. But it is clearly better than the Chaos Holt, Chaos Hell at list. Um, so I think um, arbitrators have to really look at that and go, particularly with the insanity immunity across the board, I think that's a problem. But um, it's better being a house gang um, with Chaos Corruption or Xenos Corruption than it is being a Gene Stealer Cult gang or a Chaos Hell at gang. So it really is, because the house gangs are so much more powerful in terms of tiering. Um, so think about that. You know, don't be the cheesy guy. Don't just do it because you want to do it because it's good in the game. Do it because it's fluffy. Do it because it's fun. Do it because you want to paint and model your guys in a particular way. Um, don't be a dick, basically. That's, that's all I'm asking you. Um, there will be those of you out there that say, hey, you know, I want to just be the best at this game and that's fine. But again, I say this in nearly every video. Necromunda isn't built for competitive play, if you ask me. It's built for narrative play more you know, still be competitive, but just don't be a meta gamer and don't try and break the system too much with, with stuff like this, because you really can abuse it in so many ways. Um, so there you go. Um, that was today's episode of Sump Banter. I'm going to be back with a few more videos pretty soon. I've still got my last um, gang guides video, which is the Delac um, gang guide, but I'm, I'm waiting to borrow the book off Selby. So um, he was going to bring it around last night and he didn't. Um, but yeah, I'll borrow that book off him because I actually don't own it, sadly. I can't afford all these books. They're very expensive in New Zealand. They're nearly a hundred bucks for a hardback book. So I've got a few, but I haven't got all of them. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm rambling again. Um, peace out. <laughs>